How rare is rare? How about one of two surviving on Muscle Car of the Week? unique cars on display at the 2012 Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals was an ultra-rare Hurst Olds convertible, one of only three made, and it featured a giant shifter, a unique platform, and a very special rider. I, I went down to Hurst Earhart in late 1969 uh, as then Vice President General Manager, and this was a car given to me as a company car. So the first time I drove it, it was my car, if you will. Uh, and uh, it, it was then configured with the original dual gate uh, shifter and so forth and uh, uh, just you know great great car to drive it took me a little while to, to begin to really appreciate all that it had because it was a very very high performance machine with the uh, the uh, lock rear end and and uh, so forth it had it just was amazing and every option that was available from General Motors uh, rode beautifully, handled beautifully, and, and was extremely fast, uh, and had a lot of fun with it. I'd always been a car nut, so this was, you know, you couldn't get anything better than, than being handed that for a company car. So I drove it to work, and drove it home, and, and uh, of course used it in all the events and so forth going on the West Coast. Oh, well, look at this fantastic car. This is a, a real Hearst Oldsmobile, a real Hearst Shifter. They flew out and they took pictures and came back and the engineers built my first shifter. This is its version for the boys today. I'm so excited. But I'm here with a beautiful restored 69. I'm very honored that they did this to special to, to feature me at the show. One of the times uh, uh, we were part of a parade lap and you know part of the PR stuff and Linda was always getting invited to do various things. So uh, I was driving her around the the track and uh, I don't know how fast I was going it doesn't f feel like you're going fast at all on that track but she had she was standing up holding on to that shifter with a big smile on her face and and without breaking the smile somehow said Bill slow down <laughs> it was that was priceless she just I mean she was a real real performer. What condition was the car in when you first got it? It was really just an average driver, the condition of it. It had, it had, had a, you know, a well-used life, actually. Um, they drove this car to uh, the events. Back in the day, they didn't trailer it. It wasn't pampered. And then would the platform on the back go on at the events? Is that what you They would, yeah, they would bring that whole setup um, in a, uh, like a, a chase vehicle, so to speak, and it would have you know everything they needed and then they would drive this car and that vehicle a van uh, to each event all over the west coast they had two cars one for the eastern half of the united states and one for the western half so there's still two available or is or one of them yeah. not around anymore no uh, the two cars exist okay um, initially there was a third car that was destroyed okay so but their intention was to always have two car so when the one was destroyed they ordered a second one right away now this car uh, is there any special options on it from from Olds or is it yeah these cars were really um, like a brass hat type of a car they were loaded um, with almost every option you could get well this car's had a full complete rotisserie nut and bolt frame off everything you can imagine we did every single piece and part on this car and as far as the, the roof on the car, I noticed that it's it's got a gold stripe down it. I mean, is that like was that painted on or what is it? Yeah, that was um, we um, we brought photo documentation of that, but we have pictures of these cars with that gold stripe. Um, this would be the only you know two cars that would have ever had that stripe, and that was really a difficult part of the restoration process that had to be dyed on there once the new top and everything was installed, and then the pinstripe around it was also painted um, with vinyl dye as well. So it was quite a process to mask all that off. It's an amazing job. I mean, the car, the car doesn't look like a new car. The car looks perfect. Like I mean, a, well, basically a restoration, uh, it's a handmade car is yeah. really what it is. Yeah. You know, it's, it's accurate and authentic, but handmade. I mean, I loved the car, so it was just wonderful to see it again. And it, it, it looked like it's supposed to look. Uh, it was interesting to see it with the platform on the back too, because you know that was only the occasional situation. But it, uh, no, it looked it looked great. And it was wonderful to see it. This 
like an old friend. That is just, what a gorgeous machine. It's, it ran as well as it sounds too. It's just a wonderful, wonderful car. It feels great, it sure does. Everything's right where it's supposed to be and oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful car. Tell us a little bit about the shifter and the platform in the back of the car. Um, that is really, that was really an amazing effort in this restoration. We, um, we found there's one shifter in existence in a museum and we measured it, took all of our dimensions from it. And I contracted with a, a, a famous old, you know, figure from the 60s, Frank Peterson, and he built all of that, uh, the ball, the shifter, and that platform um, off of dimensions we took, but the platform doesn't exist anywhere, so we would made that strictly from photographs. And uh, the original back bumper on the car had scuff marks from where it attached, so we knew the dimension of it, we knew how it landed. I would say it's 99% like one of the original platforms, but we had to recreate it. Well, I'm looking at a beautiful 455 cubic inch uh, engine, and uh, you can see from the beauty of it, the color, the cleanliness, the restoration has been extremely well done. It just, it just, I cried literally this morning when I got on the shifter. The tears were right out from under my sunglasses. So you remember doing it? I was it? trying to be cool. <laughs> I just remember doing it. I just wrote it for the 50th anniversary for NHRA, and then we put the car and the shifter in Speedy Bill's museum. So it was really a pleasure when they called me to yeah. ask me to do this show. It, it, it did stand out, and, and everywhere I, you'd go, you'd get the thumbs up, you'd get people come ask questions about it uh, and, and occasionally uh, uh, young hot rodders would want to drag race it and I can say I never lost a drag race on the streets I didn't do a lot of it. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the drivetrain what's in it for an engine transit we're in? Well what was unique about uh, Hearst Olds um, in the very beginning was that GM wouldn't put an engine larger than a 400 in a production car it was against their corporate ruling so Hearst took these Oldsmobiles and they were able to sell this car with a 455 engine, which was really a big step up in 68 and 69. So these were a, uh, a basically a big car engine that had the W30 equipment, a better cam, uh, specific cylinder heads, um, very specific gear and ra uh, rear end gear ratios, and uh, everything was you know kind of a blueprinted package. Um, they were rated at 380 horsepower. We rebuilt this to factory spec in the restoration. It made right at 380 horsepower, but it did better on the torque, and it made 520 foot-pounds of torque, which probably was true in the day, but they advertised, I believe, 500 foot-pounds sure. of torque. So it is really a very capable muscle car, absolutely. Um, a very nice package they put together. Well, one of the things that I, I remember distinctly, I, I lived in... Uh, uh, in locking out of Flint Ridge, and, <clears throat> and our company had, uh, Hearst Earhart's plant had been destroyed in the 1971 earthquake, and uh, so we had to move, and we ended up in Chatsworth, which was on the other side of the San Fernando Valley. So every day I drove about 30 miles across the valley, and going from uh, from my home to the through Glendale to the Pasadena Freeway, uh, I had to go through some windy hills and, and almost every day I'd come across a, uh, a Porsche that was going the same way and so we would we would race every day and he would he would get away from me in the S turns and curves and then I'd catch up to him on the flats and, and we did this time after time and it got to be really funny. There's a lot more on this car at our website at musclecaroftheweek.com, including an extended length interview of the people you saw in this video. And you can check our Facebook page. We're gonna have a teaser for next week's car. It's gonna be a small little picture, but maybe you can figure out what it is. And of course, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss an episode of Muscle Car of the Week.